Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Chris Ruffley, I'm the Assistant Farm Manager here at Harper Adams University in Shropshire. Uh, we're milking two, two units of cows here, we've got 380 cows going through a rotary parlour and 50 cows going through a a uh, robotic unit. We're here in the, in the Roden and Turn catchment area and we're, we're quite close to the Aquilet Mere and the, and the Newport Canal. So all our slurry here is um, processed through a, through, a, through a press separator, through a screen. All the slurry from the sort of 430 cows and also a, um, a pig unit which is roughly equates to about a 200 cow unit is all processed through the one separator. So it separates the slurry into, into two fragments, into the, into the liquid faction which goes into a bag tank which is a, a covered bag tank and also an o two open top lagoons and then there's a solid element which is about 18 to 20 percent dry matter which is stored in a, in a covered shed and then can be then transported either onto our fields or exported to neighbours. Using the separation system it really en enables us to, to make better use of the, of the nutrients We've obviously got a liquid fraction with a high readily available nitrogen, which we can use as a, as a fertiliser, which is a very topical thing this year. The, uh, the, solid, the solid fraction can also be used um, particularly on lucerne ground, where we want to have high levels of, of potash and phosphate uh, applied to the ground, but lower levels of readily available nitrogen. We can also export this, this, solid, this solid fraction to our neighbours. For example, we, we have maize growing agreements with our neighbours. The covered storage is, is, is really, the massive benefit to that are the fact that no rainwater can enter the system and it also enables us to hold on to, to vital nutrients such as nitrogen. It re really reduces the volatilisation of nitrogen into the air. We have, we have about 18,000 metres cubed of slurry storage which really enables us to, to utilise the slurry at the correct time rather than be any, under any pressure to try and spread at a time which is un, unsuitable. It would be really useful I think to cover these two tanks a to keep the rainwater out but really just to try and reduce the sort of contact with the air and then hold on to our nutrients. Thinking today about some of the issues associated with nutrient management and slurry management and taking a proactive and targeted uh, view on looking at slurry management can really help thinking uh, in a wider focus about gaining the benefits in terms of the nutrients. Um, a, a significant proportion of those nutrients in the slurry can be in a crop responsive form and the best bet is to think about how you can target those as appropriate. Uh, so that may be in things of like uh, cutting down water dilution, getting into slurry systems. Uh, it may be a good water audit, thinking about where water's coming in from the parlour or from flushing passageways or off roofs and yards and therefore then diluting that potential uh, nutrient value on, on nitrogen, phosphorus. Uh, it could be potentially thinking a little bit more about separation and producing two forms of slurry that can be more targeted in terms of both nitrogen and phosphorus use. So that we're thinking then uh, about reduced volumes of dilute slurry on the ground and cutting down some of the issues then of nitrate leaching uh, and allowing percolation into the soil to reduce some of those losses of ammonia volatilisation. And on the separated slurries we could have a higher proportion then of the phosphorus which would be more available for crop uptake. I think one of the key things to think about is just taking a, a sort of targeted approach. It's not taking a, a broad brush approach to thinking about absolutely everything but something that's appropriate for a particular farm and location can just give a better response in terms of some of thinking about some of that nutrient value and particularly at the moment when we think about the uh, inorganic fertiliser prices that are bought in are considerable, therefore making better use of slurry as a resource uh, and less of a bit of an issue uh, can give a really good proactive positive response. Key techniques in reducing ammonia emissions and phosphate losses include covering slurry stores to reduce ammonia emissions from the slurry surface and to keep the rain out. This reduces the volume to be stored and spread and reduces nutrient loss slurry separation to allow for more effective storage and spreading of the liquid and solid fractions. This enables better targeting and timing of nutrient applications to maximise uptake by the crop. Low emission slurry spreading to minimise contact with the air and reduce ammonia emissions and only spreading when the crop needs it which also reduces nutrient loss. The code of good agricultural practice for reducing ammonia emissions has some more useful tips. 
Reducing ammonia emission benefits human health as ammonia can react with other pollutants in the air to form fine particulates, which can cause heart and respiratory illnesses. It also reduces the risk of nitrogen deposition on protected sites, such as the meres and mosses in North Shropshire. Spreading slurry at the correct time when crop uptake is higher reduces sediment runoff and nutrient leaching, helping to protect water quality. So spreading wise we have a number of different ways and I think it's probably one of the ways we're uh, really well kitted out really. The 12 metre dribble boom on the, on the tanker enables us to direct, apply slurry directly to the ground rather than using, rather than using a splash plate. That keeps the leaves of the plants clean and also reduces any, any emissions quite drastically. The two methods we use for applying that then are a, a disc injector, which is a 4.4 metre disc injector. Particularly we use that on grass and also onto, onto stubbles, particularly before maize. We've also got a, a 6 metre trailing shoe applicator, which is a really useful system for applying onto into growing cereals in the spring. Again, similar to the tanker, that applies the slurry to the ground rather than spraying on the surface of the crop which reduces emissions and particularly the contact, particularly with grass, it reduces the contact with the slurry onto the leaves of the plant. So in the, in the future we'd really like to um, improve our, our storage. Whilst we have a lot of storage, it's not perhaps the best storage. Um, one, of the, one of the really kill way, key ways we could do that would be either to cover the tanks or to increase our uh, capacity through the, through the sealed bag tanks that we already have. Catchment sensitive farming can provide specialist advice on slurry management, retaining nutrients on farm and reducing nutrient losses to water and air. For more information and funding opportunities, visit the CSF web pages or contact your local catchment sensitive farming officer. Further advice is also provided in the DEFRA Code of Good Agricultural Practice for reducing ammonia emissions and funding is available through the Farming Investment Fund.